everybody, welcome to Nation. My name is Jersey, and you're here. Thanks for checking us out. If you're new, thank you for stumbling across this video. Hopefully it's not the worst thing you've seen today, and it's just slightly better than a cat video, and you want to go back and watch some of the old videos. This is like uh, episode 30-something, and it is a weekly episode. Um, every week we have one. It's on iTunes, Google Play, uh, SoundCloud. Uh, we also have it on YouTube, and uh, it should be linked through Facebook. So go back, watch it, and become part of the nation. But if you are one of the nation, somebody who watches, thumbs up, comments, subscribe, all that cliche terms, right? You're the guy who sends me some text message being like, what's up, man? Love the show. You, my friend, are one of the cool kids. You are part of the nation. And it's because of you that I get to do this show. So I, I, I'll give it to you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for checking us out regularly. I really do appreciate it. I hope you're getting something out of it. If not, I hope you're just wasting some time with me. That's cool too. Um, if you are one of my awesome clients, I am a sales rep for Window Cleaning Resource. Let that be known beforehand. Um, you, 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 you are the reason I get paid. So thank you for putting your orders. And if you haven't ordered any supplies through me yet, please do so. I would love nothing more. Big, small, anything. Just hit me up, text me. If it's already in your cart, shoot me a message. Be like, hey, what's up? I want to put an order in it's in my cart. Can we do this? I'll give you a shout. We'll put it in and I get credit for it. And that's awesome. It's like a virtual high five. So thank you, you guys very, very much also. And if you want to contact me, uh, shoot me a text, say my nose is crooked, my hair is bad, my show is crap, please do that, 862-312-2026. If you want to say, what's up, it's my first time watching this, I'm out in fill in the state, uh, that is amazing. It's really my best part of my week is getting messages from viewers all week I get them saying, hey, I just found the show, I love it, asking questions, asking product questions, asking business questions, just saying, what's up, man? I love it. I love it. So if you're free, shoot me a text. I would love nothing more than that. So please do that. And um, I want to give a couple shout outs to a few different people. First off, Jennifer Galvin. Uh, thank you for being so stinking awesome. Just like Sergio Seleski, probably butchering something of your names. I'm sorry. But thanks for checking us out. Thanks for commenting. Glad you guys found the show. I'm glad you watched. It's super amazing. Uh, and Kevin the Window Cleaner. Who, but, oh, oh, um, I'm sorry. Kevin actually in the last episode didn't even say hi to me. He went right by me. He oh, just said hi to Jordy. Oh, all right. I didn't know. I thought Kevin was saying hi to me. Sorry, Kevin the Window Cleaner. I thought you were saying what's up to me, but you weren't. You were saying what's up to Jordy and ignoring me. So that's cool. It's cool. It's whatever. I get ignored a lot. That's fine. I'm married after all, so I am used to it. But uh, thanks. If you haven't checked it out, check it out. Uh, it is Kevin the Window Cleaner uh, on YouTube. You can give me a shout out sometime, Kevin. Anyway, we do a contest every single week. Last week's winner is, drum roll please, Window Warrior. What? Ben, you won. You won the $50 credit and swag bag from Window Cleaning Resource. So thanks, man. Thank you. If you want to join, every single week we have a contest and it is available to anybody watching this show or listening to the show. All you got to do is go to the YouTube feed of this show. Down below, comment, thumbs up. I'll give you a second if you want to comment right now. Pause the video. Cool. If you've done that, we got your name. We randomly pick a winner every single week. This week, if you want to win, it's a $50 credit for Window Cleaning Resource and... A swag bag. That's the sticker packs with all the cool stickers behind me. And it is a cool WCR t-shirt with the round logo and the much coveted Ettore lapel pin. That's a squeegee pin that everybody is freaking out about. So that's yours. All you need to do is comment down below if you're watching this on YouTube right now. Comment, thumbs up, and that's it, man or ma'am. You could win. So definitely, definitely do that. That is super, super appreciated. And like I said, if you want to put any orders in for me, definitely contact me. But today is not a salesy day. I'm not going to talk about specific products, but if you're part of the nation, 
or you're somebody who uses water feeding or does water feeding already and you don't want to learn the basics, you already know what they are, I'm giving you a free pass. You don't have to watch this episode. Still thumbs up, still subscribe, still comment, but you don't have to watch because this is going to be talking to you, the person out there who is wondering like, what the heck is water feeding? Why do I want to water feed? What is that weird pole thing? And why are you not using soaps or squeegee? I'm going to explain it all to you this episode. And it is Water Feeding 101. The most basic thing in water feeding we're going to cover today. Now, just so you guys know, I'm going to be in ICE, the International Cleaning Expo, in Las Vegas. uh, The end of this month, January of 2018. Uh, Look it up. ICE is a great, great event. Uh, This year... uh, is uh, I'm doing a class on this exact subject uh, with Alex Lamborghinis. You know Alex. Everybody knows Alex and loves him. We're going to be doing a class about uh, water feeding. And uh, this is probably my number one question I get on live chat. Now, I'm on the site, windowcleaningresource.com or shopwindowcleaningresource.com. I'm on there every uh, day, actually. Uh, It is 5 to 11 at night. That's my shift that I'm usually on there. Um, and my most asked question is, I'm looking for a water fed kit. What one should I buy? And a lot of times people don't even know the very basics of it. So we have a really, really awesome manual for that. It is a, uh, understanding water feeding. Just ask me, I'll shoot it off to you. It's very cool. Um, but I'm going to explain it today. So this is the basics and the basics of water feeding is this in a nutshell. You take a filtration system, a bunch of filters. You run tap water through a garden hose to that, takes out all the crud in the water, shoots the water up a pole, and out a brush. You scrub the the window, which agitates the dirt. The dirt becomes part of the water, and the water rinses off. Now, something you should know about water. First and foremost, water is, everybody thinks water is clean and pure and blue and oh, right? But water strives to be dirty. It really does. It wants to not be completely pure. It always is pulling stuff out. Even when you produce pure water, if you put it in a bowl, let it sit on your counter, by the next day, it would have absorbed things from the air, from even the bowl, depending on what you're using, different things. Because water strives to be dirty. So, if you take that water with no chemicals and you purify it down to zero TDS, which I'll explain in a second, meaning it's pure, there's no crud in it, there's no, uh, you know, hard water stuff so minerals calcium there's no silica or uh, anything that's in the water it's just pure water down to a certain level it strives to be dirty you agitate that dirt on the window and it, that dirt becomes part of the water you're able then to take more pure water and rinse it down this is the same concept as if you were to wash your black car on a summer day you hose it down what happens you get spots you go how the heck did i get spots right The spots are when the water is evaporated, all the crud that's in the water is left there. Now, if you take it all out and you spray your car down with pure water, you can't spot. There's nothing in there to spot. So, that is what pure water is. Now, I explained something called TDS. Now, TDS, you've probably heard thrown around. TDS stands for total dissolved solids, but it's the count of how much crud is in the water. You want it to be zero parts per million. So, um... That number at that zero, you actually have pure water, okay? So, now to decide what your TDS is, there's meters for that, and we'll kind of jump off that bridge a little bit later. But basically, that filtration kit purifies the water down to zero TDS. That's where you get that. Now, knowing what kind of water you have out of the gate is a big part of water fed. So, there's two different types of water obviously different variations of it there's soft water and hard water you've heard that you've heard that term of hard water probably in hard water removal what is it a ton of crap on a glass that you have to end up chemically restoring or removing somehow right that's hard water hard water usually is anything over that 100 tds mark anything under that is soft water which means there's less less crud to pull out of the water now there's even a couple zip codes Uh, across the country, I know California has a few of them, that have basically, basically pure water right out of the tap, which is craziness, right? But it's the way that they filter and the way that their pipes are run and all that, blah, 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 that they can actually water feed right out of the tap. Now, 
I'll give you a couple examples. So here in North Carolina, our water is about 40 TDS. That's soft water. But in Wisconsin, it's about 250 to 300 TDS. That's hard water. So two different systems, you can use the same system for both, but one will be way more efficient and one will be way less efficient. One will be able to be used in a soft water area with the 40 TDS a lot better than the other. That's what you want to do. Now, right on our site, um, with that uh, understanding pure water, basically, the uh, PDF kind of PowerPoint presentation type thing that I can send you actually has a water meter in there where you type in your zip code or a couple zip codes. Always do a few just so you can kind of get a little bit of a better idea. But put your zip code in. It will tell you what your water conditions are where you're working. Now, if you are under... 100, meaning you're in a soft water area, you are lucky because there's guys out there and gals out in Texas, Vegas, uh, a lot of different places that have really crappy water. I mean, I've seen 700, you know, that's just craziness, craziness. And those guys have to run an RODI system. It's compared to somebody in a soft water area like me in North Carolina at 40, where I can get away with just a DI. Now, what are the differences, you say? I've seen tubes on wheels and stacks and different things and scuba tanks. What are they? Well, in the purification side of things, there's two real decisions. Again, based off your TDS, how much money you have to spend in the inside is going to tell you how much money you can spend per gallon. A DI tank, which stands for deionized resin, is always going to be a lot more because the resin's taking the grunt of all of it. But you can also get something called an RODI, right? DI was the deionized resin. RO stands for reverse osmosis. It's just a type of filter. It's Think of it as a very, very fine mesh, right? But the benefit to putting an RO in that filtration system, right? The RO is what they use at a car wash for the spot-free rinse because it can flow more and it's cheaper, is the RO is a self-cleaning membrane, right? So it's a filter that takes out pure impurities, basically, to a very, very high level, but it's self-cleaning. So unlike the resin, which looks just like sand, we'll say, little beads, their mixed bed is what most of it is. Mixed bed just means that there is negatively charged ions and positively charged. And both of those accept the opposite, okay? So it takes out a lot of crud. But say for even numbers, there's a million pieces of sand or resin balls, right, in a tank. It can suck up a million pieces of TDS. These are just a dumb example, if you will. But once it gets to a million and one, it can't take anymore. It's done. You have to change it. It can't purify anything else, right? With an RO, that's that self-cleaning membrane we talked about, what that does is it takes out most of the crud. So if you're putting in 700 into this thing, and the other side, you're gonna have like 35, right? 30, 40, something like that on the other side. Now, you're only taking 40 and giving it to finish it off uh, with the DI. It could even be less than that. It takes out a ton more than that even. But you're taking that small amount now and giving it to the DI. Now remember, the DI, deionized resin, that resin is like sand. It expends. It gets used up. The less you send to that, the longer it lasts, the less you have to change it. Now, for even numbers. The price may have changed now, but I'm going to give you dollar amounts. On a three-quarter cube tank, which is our most you know, uh, purchased tank, um, it is $181 at the time of this video to refill that. A three-quarter cube of resin is $181. Now, in Wisconsin, when I started this 10 years ago, when I started my own company and tried to do water fed, I went with a standard tank. My TDS was so high, I was actually on a well also, so the TDS was ridiculous. I blew through a tank in seven hours of use. So it cost me $181 in seven hours. You're like, what? Why would you do that? Why would you go water fed if that? That's right, why would you? I put that system away after that and went, this is stupid. Until about a year later, I was like, oh, I got the wrong system. So a higher one. Now you're talking an RODI, which I switched over to. And each gallon of water is like a penny, two pennies. 
You know, it's way cheaper to run an RODI, but an RODI system will always cost you more right out of the gate. But it is well worth it because it doesn't care if you're in hard or soft or well or whatever water, it will purify it. Where a DI, it cares. It can purify it, but if you're in very high like well water or something like that, it'll get used up right away and that water is going to cost you a buttload of money. Which, if that's your prerogative, cool, call me up, man. We'll get you resin <laughs> right now. Sorry, that's not funny. But what is, is when I got done in seven hours and went, I just blew $180 so I could do this a little bit faster, a little bit easier, it wasn't worth it. So going to an RODI system was definitely key. Now, um, an RODI system starts off, again, timing of this, I'm just talking price. You want to talk actual price, hit me up. We'll, we'll talk and I'll explain better. But as this is the cheapest system, RODI that's on the market right now is 1000 bucks. The cheapest tank that's on the market right now is like 180 bucks, right? So there's a huge difference, huge difference. But it's the cost of water, cost per gallon. Now, besides the DI and besides the RODI, there's a couple of versions of each of those, right? There's powered or unpowered. Now, when you look at an unpowered system, again, systems I'm super familiar with, like the Zero Pure. That system, that's the one with the big shiny tube in the middle, great system, our best selling system. But anyway, that system is unpowered, which means there's no pump on that, which means it takes the flow of water from a building or house or whatever, a spigot through a garden hose, whatever flow that is, is what pushes the water through and up the, up the tube, up the hose, through the hose, up the pole, all that. What happens is with an RO, built in it will always take up some of the pressure it's such a fine mesh that you got to really push that water so it takes away some of that pressure with a di there's a lot lot less of that almost none so through a standard di if you're putting 40 psi in from the spigot you're getting 40 psi out right with a di with an ro an ro di it's not happening so you see a lot more of the booster pump things but you can get an un unpowered system they work great under 30 feet and on decent pressure. I've been in places where I was getting like 20 or 30 PSI out of the spigot, which barely will even run the thing on the other side. So that's when a booster pump comes in. Now, do you need a booster pump right out of the gate? No, you don't. But I run one on every truck just because at some point you're gonna need it and you might as well have it and not need it than not have it and need it, right? But again, none of us have money fairies, so it all really comes down to what our budget is on what you can afford, what you can get. But that's something to think about down the road with an RODI. Now, in that RODI, you have powered and unpowered, but you also have a trolley. Now, a trolley, you can get a straight DI trolley, Tucker, or you can get a RODI from Tucker. Well, there's a lot of other trolleys. I really like Tucker stuff. Shout out to Sean, I know you don't watch, but whatever. Uh, this stuff's awesome. The RODI, it's called fill and go, right? That is a trolley. Now, the trolley, is a fancy UK word for it can hold water. So it's a big tank, say 50 gallon tank that's framed out and all the components, all those tubes, the filters, right? Remember we had the uh, RO, DI, and there's actually a pre-filter on those also. So those three filters are in conjunction on this system. Water comes in just like before and it goes through the filtration and actually is put into the tank. So now you have a tank, 50 gallon tank of pure water. What's awesome about that is that you can now use this on route. All you do, there's a hose reel right on top. You pull this thing out. There's pure water in there. There's electric pumps working off a battery. You don't need to do anything, right? You walk up. There's a remote control. No kidding. A remote control. You hit the button. Flows water. You clean those couple windows on that storefront. Hit the button. Shuts it off. You're good and you're out of there. So try something to think about. Now... Keep in mind, with the fill and go, which is my personal favorite, there's a couple other ones that are super sexy in their design, but a pain in the butt to get into the country, right? So I like US built. That's what it is. It's just a great product in general, and you get to deal with Sean, so high five and kudos for that. But that system starts at $49.99. So you see where cost starts going up, right? You can get a Ferrari, or you can get a Toyota. They both do the same thing, but how many bells and whistles do you want in it, right? The fill and go is amazing. 
look at it. If you got that in the budget, definitely look at that. But remember, with whatever system you have, it wants to meet your needs. Um, they're awesome both ways. If you can, I have dust flying around here, feathers or something. But if you can, go with that RODI. A DI, there's two different versions of that, really. There's like a carry and a non-carry. So you've seen the scuba tank kind. That's the cheapest one. No bells and whistles. There's an inlet and an outlet and a big scuba looking tank. Don't put pressure through. It's not really a scuba tank, but it looks like one. And the resin's in that. Water goes in, goes through the resin, comes out pure. That tank is 180 bucks. Right now we have one on sale. Throw that one out there. Three quarter cubes, good size, good price. That tank needs to be strapped down somewhere because it's a pain in the butt to carry. Can you do it? Yeah. You can do anything you put your mind to, <laughs> but it sucks. So it's an option though. Uh, the tank is a super easy way to get in, but remember, if your water's too high, as you creep up, it costs more and more per gallon. You're changing it now seven hours. You can't even finish a job before you need to change it. That's what sucks about that, right? But again, that's a good option. Now, there's a carry version of that, and my all-time favorite version of the DI, which is the Unger Hydro Power. Now, that system has handles. It's very easy carry. There's three options. Stage one means one bag of resin. Stage two, which is you guessed it, two bags of resin, and stage four, which is four bags of resin, right? All that means is that it's longer between changes, really. That's it. But that's a carry system. There's a, 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 a built-in TDS meter, right? That is what tells you if you're running pure water or not. Built into that machine, hose water in, runs through the uh, bag, lots of cool components in that one, comes out uh, pure. So that's another one, but it's more expensive than the standard tanks. Something to think about. That's on the DI side of things. Go RODI if you can. But what do you do? Once you have that pure water, now you need to start looking at poles. Okay? So you got the pure water. You picked it. I want the zero pure, right? It's an amazing RODI system. It's a good thing. I want that. What poles work with that? Any of them. Any of them will because... We're running it all to different types of fittings, depending on what fittings you have. The fittings are what connect, not necessarily the pole itself and the system itself. It's the hose getting it between the two. So any pole will work with any system. You don't have to pair them up. It's not like you have to use a zero pole with a zero system or a tucker with a tucker, unger with unger, right? You don't have to. But when you're looking at poles, here's where the big money berry as I call it, comes into play too. It's composites of poles. Now, there's a few of them, okay? There's like, we'll say five for even numbers, five, right? All of them start on the one end of the spectrum and go all the way to the other end of the spectrum. And depending on what you wanna spend, what you wanna do when you're in the field, now remember, the heavier the pole, the harder it is throughout the day. It feels like you're wrestling a gorilla. You know, if you do water feeding already, if you're still watching, you know it's wrestling a gorilla, right? This pole may only weigh seven, eight pounds, four pounds if you're into the real premium stuff, but when you extend it 40 feet up, that translates weight. And now you're balancing, you're moving muscles you have not moved ever, you're getting sore. So the less the weight, the better off you are, but again, it costs more. If there's money's no budget, go with the lightest pole possible. The other thing that's in the composite, that's not just the weight, that even has more of a factor to how much of a pain in the ass it's gonna be, is the stiffness. Why do I need stiffness? That doesn't even make any sense. What if I'm working straight up and down? That doesn't... Here's why. Now, when you, got a, when you got a pole up on the building, you're actually pushing on the bottom. And the push translates to the brush. And when the push translates, that's what you get, that's scrubbing, right? If you had a dirty dish in your sink and you took a, a, a sponge or something and you just set it down on the, on the plate and you did this, nothing's gonna happen. You don't have scrubbing enough. You need to really scrub. Same thing on windows. You need to translate that power. Now, if you got a floppy floppy pole, like a fiberglass pole or something along those lines, or hybrids, right? then that trend, that push, if you can push 10 pounds, we'll say, that bend in the pole is going to take up so much more of that that you actually will hit the building on really strong pushes before it even translates to the brush. The stiffer the pole, like in a high mod, 
that stiffness, the pole doesn't bend. So all that bend, that push that you have is translated to the brush, which means you got to push a heck of a lot less. Again, it's all money. It's more expensive for the better composites. But, as my alarm goes off here, but here are the, the, the composites and really what the pros and cons are of them. So we start all the way on the bottom with aluminum. Now, there are decent aluminum poles as far as clamps and things like that. I really like the Unger aluminum. That's the Enlight system it uses the same setup, but it's aluminum. But aluminum is heavy and it's heavy. And the old Tucker poles, right? Remember when Tucker was just the old gold poles? You've seen them in every janitor's closet in the country. Those poles are heavy. Pros, you can fix them on the fly. It's aluminum. You can cut it, move a clamp, blah, 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 you're done. They're expensive. I mean, they're heavy. They're inexpensive, cheap, but beast to work with. Now, from there, you go to a pole called a fiberglass pole or glass fiber or whatever, depending where it comes from. That's what they call it. Uh, that's like you Canadians saying uh, color with like an OU instead of a C-O-L-O-R, right? So glass fiber, fiberglass pole, those are floppy, floppy and heavy. And you're not going to find them in really, really tall sizes because they're so floppy that when you're pushing, the middle of the pole hits the building before the translate happens up to the brush. Fiberglass. Cheapest pole out there. You can buy them for a couple hundred bucks and it gets you in to cleaning, but they're miserable poles. But again, price-wise, if you're getting in on a budget, something to think about. Now, from there, you go to a hybrid. Now, a hybrid pole, in my opinion, I'm sorry, comment down below if I suck, because listen, I'm not always right. I know I'm not right. These are just my opinions, right? But a hybrid pole is the worst pole out there. That's, I'm sorry, that's my opinion. Why? It's because a hybrid pole is close enough dollar-wise to a carbon fiber but you lose so much stiffness and weight with a with a fiberglass or with a hybrid pole. A hybrid pole, they usually come in the cool colors, right? We got one that's blue. It's awesome. The thing sucks. I'm sorry. It doesn't suck. In my opinion, it sucks. You probably have that one. And you go, ah, oh, it's not that bad, right? Because you've never used a carbon fiber pole. But from a hybrid, now you get into the world of carbon fiber. Now I have well over a dozen poles. And I'm telling you, every pole that I have is carbon fiber. Everyone I have currently is carbon fiber. Why? Because carbon fiber composite is the best composite for poles. It's the lightest. It's the stiffest. It's the greatest composite for poles. Now there's two versions of the carbon fiber. There's carbon fiber, standard carbon fiber, just called carbon fiber. There's different wraps in that carbon fiber. So some carbon fiber is way better than others. But then there's another version called high mod. Now high mod is its own beast. That's a four pound pole that is as stiff as a board all the way up. I mean, it's amazing. But you're gonna pay twice as much for high mod as you would for even a carbon fiber. So, something to think about. Again, if you got nothing but money, you want the best of the best, go high mod. But, I like carbon fiber too. Because carbon fiber, you're paying less money, you're getting a super rigid pole, and you're getting it at the heights you want. I don't work personally over that like five stories and up. I, I'll, I'll lift and water feed from a lift, but I don't like going up that high. Some guys will go higher than that, I personally don't. Again, these are my stupid opinions, right? But if you wanna go higher than that, say 70 feet, which is seven stories, 10 foot a story, about, 80 feet, eight floors, eight stories up, right? You gotta go high mod, because you gotta be so stiff, because the longer the pole, the more translate you have in bend and curve and whatnot. Now, there's also different, versions of carbon fiber not to overwhelm you again if you got questions hit me up we can talk more specifically to your needs but there's also wrapped and unwrapped carbon fiber so some carbon fiber wears out some of it is wrapped with a kind of a protective outside on it there's a big difference between the two so keep that in mind now there are great poles that all run to what's called a ural thread now this is kind of a different thread than you're used to if you have an extension pole it's got real thick coarse um threads on there, right? That is an Acme thread or US standard, whatever you want to call it, right? That is what uh, you can screw on a cone tip or any of that type of thing or a broom head or something. But on water fed poles, because they originated in the UK really, is a Euro thread tip. And it's a tapered thread with a fine thread on there. 
Now, that is special, so you can't just take one pole and go, I want a water-fed pole, and make it into it without doing a bunch of conversions that usually are a pain in the butt to even find, if you can. Um, but like a standard Acme thread, you can't turn that into a Euro thread, for the most part. There's not even an adapter for it. There's an adapter to go Euro to Acme, because maybe on your water-fed pole, these poles are 30, 40, 50 feet. You may want to put a, a, a duster or something on that. You can actually change it to that way. But you can't kind of go the other way. So you want to find a pole that's lighter, that's good, that's made for pure water cleaning, a water-fed pole. Once you have a Euro thread, you can put on any brush. And I won't get into brushes here. This is something, again, personal preference. You would talk about, say, a Tucker Hybrid. I don't mean to keep bringing Tucker up. I love the Tucker Hybrid brush. It's my favorite brush on the market right now. Second to the Unger Radius. I Those are my two brushes, right? But... You may talk to somebody, and that is my absolute favorite brush in the world. They go, that is crap. That's garbage. I would never use that. I wouldn't even give that to my employees. Right? It's personal preference. It doesn't matter. They may love a Vicam brush or uh, uh, anything. Uh, you know, a different brush that they may have used forever, and they like that brush. So it's all personal preference. But think, in brushes, that's what actually does the scrubbing, right? So you have soft, soft fibers down to coarse like a boar's hair. Right? You can go across the gambit. It's personal preference. Look at brushes yourself. We don't need to talk about brushes. This episode is 101. It gets boring enough without brushes. But now with all that done, and you said, hey, I'm going to get zero pure RODI filtration setup. And I'm going to get a zero pro carbon fiber pole. Perfect. Why do I want that? Well, I heard on some forums that these guys said that they clean way better than you with your water-fed fanciness. You're full of crap. You are full of crap if you say you're better than a water-fed pole. You're full of crap. Why is that? Is because you've not used one. Or if you did, you used it wrong. Because a water-fed pole will always clean more thorough because you're scrubbing the frames. It will always be faster because there's no ladder moves. There's no rope moves. If you're doing drops, you got to re, re, re-tether, re-run lines, do all that stuff. I'm going to be faster than you. Always. There's no streaks, smudges, smears, none of that. If you're doing it right, just like if you're squeegeeing right, right? None of that. I'm always going to be better and faster with the water fit pull. And the best part about it is I'm going to have my feet on the ground. I'm going to have my feet on the ground. Now, as a dude, right... We always don't talk safety because we're like, ah, it doesn't matter, man. Like, psh, I'm not scared. I'll just go. You also have never fallen off a roof and had your butt pucker, right? Which, what's up, Kurt? If you're watching, Mr. Falls Off Roofs. He's okay. He's okay. But serious things can happen. I won't even bring up a, another buddy of mine who fell off. And, and I got a few friends that have been very hurt. But safety is huge. I can clean three stories from the ground. Ah, oh, the wind. I, 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 I can tip over and fall two feet. Maybe my pole falls, but I didn't. I'm still here. Oh, man, I scraped my knee. Ha <laughs> ha. That's it. Safety is amazing. If you're a one-person show, what happens if you don't work? You make no money. Like, you're out. You're SOL. It's done. Like, right? Six weeks. You're out. So, safety's huge. Fast, I'm telling you I could do circles around. You're doing a two- or three-story building with a ladder and a squeegee, I'm going to smoke you with a water-fed pole from the ground. I don't care if there's a bush. I don't care if there's a tree that i got to get my ladder through because I can shove a pole through it just as easy. It's better and faster, I'm telling you. Yeah, I'm a salesman, so take it with a grain of salt, right? But I'm telling you, I've been on pure water a long time. Before I was a salesman, I would not be a window cleaner without it. So something to think about. But with all that, it's a great add-on. If you're doing pressure washing and you're watching this show, definitely hashtag pressure washer love. Thanks for watching the show, guys. Um, but you can add on window cleaning outs only after a house wash. I charge 99 bucks for almost every house because they're already clean. I'm just touching them up and finishing them. I could be out of a house, set up, tear down 20 minutes with that added extra 100 bucks on. It's a great, great thing. So if you're in the market, do some more research. Don't take my word for it. None of this stuff, none of us are like, you know, know-it-alls. It's just what we do. But figure it out for yourself. 
It's an amazing thing. And call me if you got questions or if you're ready to order. That's a huge high five. If you learned something from the show, you want to be my customer, that's huge. Call me or text me 862-312-2026 and comment down below with the thumbs up. You'll be entered into winning some swag from WCR. So thanks for watching. I hope I didn't bore you too much. If anybody's even watching anymore, let me know. Thank you guys so much for watching. And I hope you are part of the cool kids and you're going to watch the next one and follow the other episodes and watch all of them and be super awesome and epic. And until next week, we'll see you later.